Hello Blender fans and welcome to Blender TC. In today's tutorial we will be creating this barrel. Remember that the texture is added at the end so you need to go to the end to see the actual full tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel, comment or hit that bell. Let's begin. In today's tutorial we will be making a simple barrel. Uh, well not so simple barrel. If you join me at the end of this uh, tutorial I will be texturing the barrel so please follow me to the end. Right, let's just work with some quick keys. What we've got is we've got the G key which will move the cube around. Control Z will undo the last action. G and Z will move it up and down. G and X will move it along the red line. And G and Y will move it left to right. Control Z will undo all actions and if we want to actually focus on something if we actually hit the tab key that takes us into edit mode. Edit mode is where you can actually alter areas of your mesh. Control Z undoes. There is also the full stop key which actually focus on whatever you've got selected whether it be a point select, a line select or a face select. So select the face, hit the full stop key and it centers on that. So hit the full stop key, select that face with the left click. And as you can see, if we select everything by A and press point, it actually just centers everything. For this tutorial, we will not be using the actual cube. So X will delete the cube. So X deletes the cube. And we'll be adding a cylinder because that's the closest thing to a barrel. So add a mesh. That's done on this top line mesh. And let's have a look for the actual cylinder. There's the cylinder. And we'll be adding the cylinder. Down in this bottom corner there is an actual menu. If you open the menu by just clicking on it with your mouse, the left mouse. Change this to 16. And as you can see that's changed this cylinder shape and it's took the geometry down quite a lot right I'm going to press the one key that looks from the front the seven key looks from the top and the five key looks at it in perspective so A to select sorry select the one key select the cylinder and then scale by the Z by 1.5 and then I'm just going to move that G and Z and move that onto the red line as you can see that doesn't look much like an actual barrel yet but if we go into edit mode by pressing the tab key and select the face select or line select doesn't matter which and press ctrl R we can subdivide this by 4 if you press the 4 on your keypad it actually subdivides it by 4 or control Z to undo that control Z if I press control R and then I move my mouse wheel up you can actually just move it up and down until you get the desired amount which is 4 in this case now I've got those four faces selected I'm going to select with the alt key and align select the two middle faces so select select so I need to press the shift key then and scale up to get the barrel shape and then I'm going to take the top and the bottom line and scale up again until we get that lovely barrel shape fantastic in edit mode go on to face select select the top and select the bottom, in fact I'm just going to select the top and then E and scale and just scale it down slightly to about there and I'll do the same on the bottom E and scale down and there we have it we've got a top and a bottom and what I tend to do as well just as a last thing to do is I'm going to select the top face and the bottom face press the E key 
and the Z key and then just scale them down slightly just to get that nice barrel shape that you see there so now we've got the actual shape of the barrel the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add the rings of the barrel so out of edit mode in fact I'm just going to smooth this barrel as you can see that's really seems to have damaged the actual barrel shape the reason being is that we haven't got enough geometry there to actually make it work so back into edit mode and what I'm going to do is select that phase E and S to scale you can do this on top and bottom but as I'm going to actually have this on the floor I'm not really going to bother with the bottom because it's it's invisible to, to our image and I'm not particularly bothered about it because it's facing the ground so what I've done there is added a loop cut and I'm going to add two more loops to here just to get a bit more definition and what I'm going to do is the top and the bottom of the barrel I'm just going to add a seam this just sharpens up edges so control R control R and that just sharpens it up if we go into rendered mode now you can see there's a bit more definition but it still looks a bit odd around here so I'm just going to control R on that inside and just sharpen up these edges and sharpen up the bottom edge there we go got a bit of distortion on the edge of that but that can be improved by just adding one more edge so E and scale down and that's it I've got my barrel shape and I'm quite happy with that next thing I'm going to do is add the actual bands to this there's a number of ways you can do this but the way I prefer is just to add a another cylinder so I'm just going to add another cylinder mesh cylinder um, but I'm going to actually make this 32 faces on this in this case because I want it to look a little bit smoother smooth shade it and G and Z to move it further up what I'm going to do is scale this down scale it in the Z direction until it becomes a thin part. let's just put into uh, wireframe it might be just easier to actually visualize it there you can see it in visualize it so you got top face bottom face and the edges in fact if I put mad cap on that might even make it even better uh, let's have a look mad cap I'll just select yeah that shows up the shadows a little bit better so go into edit mode control R I'm gonna add a loop cut on the side and I'm going to add another one, Control R, and if you GG, that will just move them in its own confines. Next thing I'm going to do is actually select the, the top, select the bottom, and then I press the I. Um, in fact, I'm going to press the E key, then the S key because I prefer to do it that way, and I'm just going to make a thin band and lastly if you right click with your right mouse button you can just do a thing called bridge faces so I'm just going to bridge these faces and as you can see that just makes a hole between the two so we've now got the band of the barrel control R on the inside just to sharpen these edges one on that side control R and one on that side I'm doing that by I'm selecting the edge and then I'm splitting that edge so so there you have it we've got the barrel created already and we've got the bands all I'm gonna do is actually go down to the bands select the, the barrel select the band and then join it the reason I've joined them up there separately 
will become apparent in a second. So I'm going to go into edit mode, select any part of that, then press the L key. Now the L key is very magic uh, because it just selects the actual object that you've got. So if I select the barrel, it's just selecting that. And if I select a line on that, it will keep objects separate. So I'm just going to G and Z, move this down, 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 down to about that. And for some reason, I've moved that away from the center by accident. So if I hit the end key and go to the item, I can reset that to zero, zero. If I just move it G and Z back in the thing, there you can see it. It's re-centralized. And I'm just going to scale that up until it's matching that ring there then G and Z let's take it down until it and scale it down until it just starts to vanish and then I'm going to grab this top edge in fact no I'm not I'm going to actually just get the rings and duplicate this ring first shift and D and G and Z and just move on its control shift and D to duplicate press the enter key and then I'm just going to press the S key to scale it up so that's made as another ring and G and Z take it down until it actually matches the barrel and then I'm just going to copy this one at the top so right click will also do it exactly the same so no it doesn't actually All right. shift and D to duplicate and press enter to fix it and G and Z move it down and then what I'm going to do is take that middle ring L shift and D press the enter G and Z move it down And then all we've got to do is just to select these two. So L key, L key, and then just scale them down. <coughs> Bless you. Right. Like I say, I'm going to just grab this top edge. Just going to grab that edge. Press the plus key so it gets all the edges at the top. And then just scale them down until it just touches the barrel. Ah, that looks better. Same on the bottom. Press the plus key, yeah, control and plus key, just to grab more edges, and then scale it down to get the shape of the barrel. And now we're getting a really realistic looking barrel. But it would be even better if we actually had a texture on it so that's what we're going to do next first texture i'm going to actually add is to the barrel rings so i'm just going to select all the rings and i'm just going to add a normal texture to this press new and i'm just going to make it that default white um, add a bit of reflectiveness to it add a bit of roughness and then just assign it and I'm going to rename that material metal rings and if we just look in edit mode everything's got the actual color metal rings at the minute and it's got a little bit of reflection to it and the next thing I'm going to do is actually select the barrel, press the L key. We're still in edit mode, obviously. And I'm going to add another texture. And the other texture I'm going to add to this is going to be a image texture. So what we go is up to there, hit the little plus key to add another texture. New texture. And then next to the base color, there's a little dot. Select the dot and press image texture. 
and the image texture I'm going to got, um, attach is one that I've got from Texture Haven. So let's open the texture. Texture Haven, uh, if you just Google that, you'll find the actual websites. And I put all my textures into zero texture. And I'm going to attach the brown planks to it. So as you can see, uh, I've got the actual planks actually attached to the other material. So I'm going to call it wood. And then I'm going to assign them. All assigning does is attach the attaches the actual texture to your wood. So I've just attached them to the wood. If I go into UV editing now, you can see that the textures are there. It's entirely up to you how you attach textures. I personally like to actually go into each texture and attach them um, individually. But it depends what you want to do with the actual textures. If you just want to, um, if you think that's good enough for your barrel, by all means, just leave it. But what I tend to do is assign them separately. So that's what I'm going to do now. So just bear with me for a few minutes. So what I'm doing is actually selecting all those edges there so I can move them and just scale them up Gee. and all I'm doing is getting that dark shape on one side of the barrel just slightly just to give it that little line and I'm going to do the same on the next one A to select, S to scale, I'm just going to move it down there. And as you can see that adds another texture to that one. And I'm just going to keep going around this all the way around it. Alright, so A to select all, G to move and S to scale. So you might decide that the uh, the texture was okay for you and it was fine. Uh, it depends what you're using it for. If it's in the background of an image, it, it doesn't need as much detail, does it? So it's entirely up to you how you do things because you're the artist and this is the tool. If I select the top there and press the Alt key, that'll just select everything. A to select all in the left hand window and scale. You could even get away with just using one little piece of wood if you wanted. I'm just going to press the Alt key because the Alt key in selecting the line on face select just selects the old rib. So A, scale. I'm just going to move that one into this one here. So I'll just scale it down again. Gee, and all I'm doing is copying that distortion on the side. So press the Alt key, select all. Right. I'm just going to stop talking in for a second and just get on with this. Sometimes it's easier just to do things like this. See, I'm already halfway round. Scale. Because this is a seamless texture as well, if you run off the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter because all it'll do is copy the actual thing from the other side. So. Got some very good textures on Texture 7. And he's adding them all the time. If you can afford to, just support him and make a donation to him. Same as if you want to support me, you can donate to me. 
as well, but that's it feeds me dogs, my cats and my sixteen fish in my pond. Well it was sixteen until the heron got one the other day, but that's life. Ah, I think we've gone all the way round there. And just a quick look at that. And we've got something that looks quite realistic. Let me just select that top. I just made a bit of a mess there. Gee, let's move it. That's it. Same on the top here. It's because of the way I've selected it. Scale Z, herb makes even. And there we go. So we've got as barrel, as barrel's more or less finished. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can do. All I'm going to do now is add a little bit of roughness to the actual barrel to make it look a bit more real. Um, go back into modeling. I'm also going to add a floor to this. Let's go into the render mode. I'm just going to add a floor. So I'm going to just mesh plane just so we've got some shadows cast. Scale up. On the actual uh, EV, I'm going to set ambient occlusion, set bloom, and also uh, screen space reflections because it's slightly reflective, and volumetrics as well, volumetric shadows. That's I think that's about right for the actual render. And the next thing I'm, I'm going to add is I'm just going to actually mess about with this texture slightly. So if we go into shading, I'm going to do is shrink that window up, just scale so you can actually see the object. Let's move it down so we can see it slightly. Sometimes that fiddly. Right, so now we've actually got the actual barrel texture there, which is the brown barrels. I'm just going to move this by pressing the G key, because they work just as well, over to the side. And I'm going to add in to this, I'm going to add in a vector, and it's going to be a bump map vector. If I select this bump map vector, I don't know why this works, but it seems to work quite well on wood, is you take from the colour, you go to the height, and then you go from the normal, and into the normal, and then what you've actually got is it's added a bit of roughness into the actual wood itself. It's easier to see in the render mode. I say select the render button up here. As you can see, you just adjust the actual strength until it's as rough or as smooth as you want. I think that's a bit too rough. Smooth it out, smooth it out, smooth it out. You can mess about with the distance as well. Which makes it a bit rougher. And I'm quite happy with the actual texture of that wood. So let's just render it and see what it looks like. Press F12. Camera's a bit too close. And let's move it that way. See. Press F twelve. And as you can see, we've now made our barrel. Simple tutorial. And just shows you a little bit of texturing and how to use the pump map effectively when making wood. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Subscribe to Blender TC, leave a comment, and don't forget to ring that bell.